You're listening to Popcorn Conspiracy on CentralCoastRadio.com. I'm one of your hosts, Kyle, and I'd like to talk about the opening night film of the German Film Festival, which is currently playing as part of the German Film Festival. It's called A Thousand Lines, and, well, it's about fake news. Now, that that very term alone is enough to get a lot of people's eyes rolling, um, especially those of the, the, the men and women behind Chronic, which is Europe's, at least in the course of this movie, it's Europe's most popular weekly news magazine. Now, in the age of dying print media, uh, this German language magazine, Chronic, delivers hard-hitting and emotional stories of investigative journalism across the world. Now, for the last few years, this success is thanks largely to their Wunderkind 20-something reporter Lars Boginius, played by Jonas Ney. Now, Boginius's ability as a journalist have won him multiple awards and seen him become the top reporter in Germany. There is a problem, however, and that is that Boginius is also Germany's greatest bullshit artist. Or so freelance journalist Juan Romero, Elias Mimbeck, uh, played by Elias Mimbeck, starts to think when he's asked to collaborate on a, a feature story. But Genius is hard, he has this hard hitting expose on a violent, racist American militia called Border Wolves. And it just, it seems just that little bit too fantastical to be true. And with his own reputation at risk, uh, Juan Romero decides to investigate with his photographer friend Milo, played by Michael Ostrowski. Now, pulling on this thread, it, it risks bringing Chronic to its knees, and he faces losing his career and his family if he's wrong. But, I mean, as a journalist, isn't that kind of what he's supposed to do? He's supposed to seek out the truth? Now, yeah, so this movie was actually, as I'm sure a lot of people probably may know from the description there, it was inspired by the uh, the 2018 Spiegelgate, Spiegelgate affair, which um, a prominent in which a prominent journalist for a German magazine called Der Spiegel uh, he admitted to falsifying articles on a grand scale, and a thousand lines kind of follows in the wake of, of a lot of films about journalistic integrity like movies like Spotlight The Post, uh, She Said or uh, All the President's Men uh, but this movie ha- is helmed by a fairly well known comedy director um, his previous his most recent movie uh, Balloon which was I believe the opening night film for one of the previous uh, German film festivals uh, Michael Bully Herbig he takes a much more satirical look at the news in this, in this kind of a true story but not really kind of movie <laughs> um, like, well I do think that this would have been better suited to a straight faced story of fraud um it it is full of laughs from uh, beginning to end. Uh, uh, Herman Florin's scripts and and characters they really bite at the heart of of the type of people or type of journalists who have kind of eradicated the public's respect for the news. Um, Chronic's managing directors in this movie. Uh, they pride themselves on this facade of of integrity, and they stand up for the truth and, and all that. It, it's it's in their it's in their company motto, but at the very in the same breath, they'll demand that that their journalists will change their stories and make them more Tarantino esque. 
um, actually, uh, right from the beginning, uh, the the article that that Juan Romero is is told to make this kind of he's literally told exactly the type of article that he has to he and this Virginius guy is going to write who exactly the kind of people that they're going to be interviewing for it and exactly the kind of uh exactly the kind of story that they want and yeah it's it's so ridiculous but that's kind of that is kind of the point it it's that's how these magazines kind of work they are very they are very uh, orchestrated i guess um i guess i i i do think that this i really do think that this would have been better as a um as a as a uh, as a serious movie but I, I i it is the movie it is really elevated by the the lovable schlub main character of Juan. Um uh in Barrack, he he plays the part of this struggling husband and, and father of four daughters with this this real charm and you can't help but root for the guy in this like uphill battle. Like often it, it, it feels like he's the only sane person in in a world full of, of people who are looking more for excuses to explain a, a, a blatant falsehood than to even question it like they, they'll like Juan will point out wait this doesn't make sense say to his wife he'll, he'll explain that to his wife and his wife will just give an explanation no no maybe this must be why oh no it must be right and it's like everyone just seems to be kind of nuts except for Juan and um I <sighs> I find much of the, to be honest, speaking of his wife, I find much of the the personal aspect of the movie, such as Juan's arguments with his wife over his obsession with the truth, and um, kind of his being away from his family and 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 stuff like that. I think that really kind of fails to tie back into the main plot in in a real uh, in a cohesive way. Like the the scenes with his four young daughters, like they're cute and all, but I don't think they serve. Um, I think they 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 more distract from the core narrative than add to it. And on top of that, I mean the the fact that they focus so much on Juan's store on Ron's um, uh, like building up his his family and his back character his backstory and stuff like that. It kind of just highlights how thin most of the other characters in the movie are. They, none of the other characters in the movie get the kind of focus on their families as much as, as Juan does. And to be honest, for such a short film, it is only about 90 minutes. I would have liked to have seen that time spent more on the uh, the investigation that Juan and Milo... Um, do into Virginius's other articles. Um, this is something that is hinted at, but it happens off screen. The the idea that Juan and, and Milo, when they start to find out that wait, this this uh, this uh, border wall story seems to be mostly made up. We're going to have to investigate his other stories as well. It it really happens off screen. Not off screen, you don't really see a whole lot of 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 that expanded on and I think that was really a pity because I thought that was where that's where the core of the movie was for me um I, I think another problem that might come because of of the comedic tone speaking of Pagenius um is that he never come this 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 Lars character, he never really comes off as this master manipulator, this 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 perfect liar that this um like he never really comes off like a, a talented Mr. Ripley type of person that they're really trying to paint him <laughs> as. Um I mean I I 
it's just really blatant from the first words that he says in the first scene that he's in that he's a pathological liar. Uh, he's talking about the, his sick sister, and you're even getting flashes of his his sister who's who's clearly really ill. But you can just tell that he's he's full of it, you know. Like I I think that the actor playing him this this. He he's actually perfectly cast because he looks almost identical to the 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 real person that the character is based on, but there's this lack of confidence behind every one of his fibs that nobody seems to pick up on except for one. And added to that, I, I think at times it feels like the film has no faith in the viewer's astuteness, <laughs> like. There's fourth wall breaks that are used heavily to hammer home what is happening or, or to to simply voice a, a character's motivations aloud. Like, they don't just trust the audience to be able to figure out what is happening or to even understand why a character is doing a certain thing. They literally have to stop the movie and have that character talk to the screen and explain what they're doing. And it just, it's really, it's really over the top. And I know it's stylish. I know that's kind of, the, the, that st- the stylish way of, of storytelling, it, it actually does in some other ways lead to some creative scenes. Like um, there's these heated emails that are going on between Ron and, uh, and Lars. And it's kind of portrayed visually as as laws uh talking down to to Juan and they're actually put they, they it's shown as they're in a classroom and laws is talking down to Juan as if he's he's a literal child you know and it's like that kind of stuff is is that kind of stuff is interesting there's some cool split screen stuff um there are there are interesting things done in this movie but yeah in in other ways I don't think that it really I I think that a a more serious take on the movie would have helped helped uh just really hammer hammer some things home a lot better than just simply explaining them to the audience um that said a, a, a thousand lines it's an entertaining film and it's kind of about the failings of journalism and fake news but it's also about the importance of of journalism as well um like that's something that the the movie kind of to be honest it kind of pulls it out as kind of like a hail mary kind of thing right at the very end but the point is like like who knows how long in, in real life these the this Virginia this Lars Virginia's character how long he would have been lying and getting away with it if it hadn't been for a, a reporter investigating him and doing the right thing. Um, it it the movie's still a little rough around the edges, but it's a it's a it's a somewhat comm- it's a commendable enough film about the the one of the greatest recent scandals in in the news in the the world of news. So um, I'm gonna give this three out of five myself as i say it's currently part of the german film festival and yeah i there's plenty of other movies that are playing there worth checking out there's one called the fox i believe that i'm really hoping to get a chance to go see and yeah there's there's plenty of other movies that are playing as part of the german film festival so uh yeah check that out as well Now, you're listening to The Popcorn Conspiracy on CentralCoastRadio.com, and we will be back right after this.